and Obama was passing through, and Joe went up to him and started asking him some tough questions. And it was at that meeting, or at that uh, discussion, where Obama used the phrase, I just want to spread the wealth. Is that right? And that is what was one of the first indications of where his true policy lies in terms of taking your money and giving it to others. And Joe the Plumber called him out on that, and I think you've been calling him out since then. Uh, what you should know is you've wrote, you've wrote a book called Joe the Plumber Taking Back America, and uh, it's out there. You can order it online if you want. Do you have any copies here for the folks? What kind of a marketer are you? <laughs> next, next time, bring some books. Yeah, can you play drums? <laughs> you, may, you may also uh, know that he's now formally in politics. He won the Republican nomination in Ohio in the 9th District. And his job is to take out a liberal Democrat, right? And, and maybe we'll see in the halls of Congress uh, in D.C. Uh, come January, right? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Joe the Plumber. How y'all doing today? Oh, man. How many of y'all love the Second Amendment as much as I do? Anybody packing? <clears throat> All right, listen to that. If there's any weirdos out there, you just saw how many hands are raised, they're packing. So you get one shot, then you're going to be killed. Hey, I'm just... I, I like an unarmed populace, you know, I, it's a scary world out there, and I always feel a lot damn better when I got my 45 in my hand, I don't know about you guys. Yeah. So, no, I'm very big pro Second Amendment, I've worked real hard to promote that, uh, I, I like to think I've done as much, if not more, than the NRA, because I speak my mind and I don't worry about politically correctness. So, and I think that's very important. <laughs> Political correctness will kill this country, and I think it's on the way there right now, and that's why we got to get people up there to really speak their mind and say what they mean. You know, for example, I'm running for Congress. How many congressmen or people are running for Congress have you ever heard, put borders on the troop and start shooting? None? Well, you heard it here first. Put border, put troops on the border and start shooting. I bet that solves our illegal immigration problem real quick. And it's not because I'm bloodthirsty. It's not because I want to kill illegal, illegal immigrants. It's because I want my border secure. That's all it comes down to. So... Let's go back for a second. We get harassed for being racist. We get harassed for being bigots. We get harassed because we want illegal immigrants to stop coming into our country, stop taking our health care, stop taking our school money that we get, stop taking our tax money that we work damn hard for, and for whatever reason, we're the bad guy? It just makes no sense to me whatsoever. And so, you know, I want to protect the border. Now, I don't begrudge. I really don't truly. I, I really don't begrudge an illegal immigrant trying to come over the border to get a job because any man worth his salt will do whatever it takes to take care of his family. What I'm sick and tired of, though, is the federal government using it as a political football. I'm sick and tired of them saying that, you know, we need to turn the other cheek and we need to help these guys out at our expense. It's not at their expense. It's at our expense. It's at the expense of our health care. It's at the expense of our hard work. And that's the problem I have with it. Now, as I said, you know, I'm running for Congress when I speak my mind. You're not going to find many politicians that will do that. But you will find one here, Lori Klein. Now, listen, uh, full disclosure, I invited Lori Klein to my wedding about a year ago. I'm a little biased when it comes to Lori. I like her a great deal. However, that all being said, you can go check her record out, and that takes away my bias because she's got a firm record on standing strong for the American people and especially the people here in Arizona. And I invite you all to go check her record out. She, you know, have it on her website for you, and it shows what she's about with illegal immigration and trying to work hard for you guys to make sure that stops. School choice, another important issue. Yeah, you know, my son's a straight A student. He's lettered in five sports. He's only a junior, and he does that because I'm a very active parent. Him and I do homework together to this very day, and because I'm involved in the school system. But believe me, my school system hates me, and I wear that with a badge of honor. But I make them work for me because I damn well pay their salary with my taxes. So we need people up here who will stand firm, stand strong, and speak out. That's why I talk about political correctness. A lot of people don't know it. You guys know where political correctness came from? It came from Germany. 
of all places. It came from Germany. They were trying to figure out why communism won't spread. They're like, man, that's a pretty good idea. Well, comrade, this capitalist, the people in the West really like this capitalist stuff. Well, how do we get rid of it? They can't do it by force of arms. So they thought, well, you know, we'll start criticizing everything and anything. We'll criticize them and make them so afraid to open their mouths up that we can take over that way. And so right before World War II started, uh, this think tank over in Germany moved. Half of them moved to Washington, D.C. The other half moved to Hollywood. So it's very true. This is, this, is, uh, this is historical. You can look it up and check it out. But that's where political correctness came from. It's actually been hatched back in the 1930s and 40s to take America out. So when you don't speak your mind, when you don't speak power to truth, you know, you're essentially falling into their trap. And, you know, that's not what Americans are about. We've been speaking our mind a long time, and we should continue to do so. I don't believe anybody deserves anything here short of veterans. The reason why I say that, veterans have already paid the price. They've already gone out and done their duty. And uh, veterans definitely deserve the benefits they were promised by their federal government. That's another thing that I did with my celebrity status, if you will. I went out and started a veterans organization because I wanted to give back to the veterans. I'm prior military. I served in the United States Air Force as a plumber. Hey, it's true. I did. I'm very proud of my service. I plumbed in Alaska. I plumbed in North Dakota. I plumbed in Okinawa, Korea. You know it. I plumbed there. So I am a journeyman licensed plumber by the United States Air Force, and I'm very proud of that fact. So I took the celebrity status, started a veterans organization. I take veterans up to Alaska, hunting and fishing, hiking, camping, and then we make sure they get the benefits that they deserve. Now, everybody else, you need to go out there and work for it your own damn self, all right? But I'm sure none of you all are afraid to do that. In fact, you probably actually want the liberty and the freedom to do more of that. Yeah. Now, the way to do that is to make sure you have strong state representatives, strong state senators, and a strong governor. That way we can do what uh, Pierce was saying earlier and tell the federal government to go stick it. Yeah. The federal government cannot, and it's obvious, run the country. I mean, look around us. There's more division right now between us than ever. Republicans and Democrats mean the same thing anymore. Who's going to promote America and push America forward? Or it's going to start locally, and it's going to start now, and it's going to start with you guys. That's how it works. That's why I came down here is to help Lori. Hopefully you guys will take her record out, look at her, and ask her questions. She's willing to be held accountable. But more importantly, well, just as important, she's willing to serve. She's willing to serve. And I tell you what, that, that's a 24-hour, 7-day-a-week job that she's willing to do, she's willing to take on, and she just needs your support to do so. So spread the name around, Lori Klein, get a yard sign, a bumper sticker, support her monetarily because it costs a lot of money to get out there and get that good old boy network broken up. And we need that good old boy network broken up. No more Billy Bobs in office. We need regular Americans, people that cut coupons out like I do. Hell, I roll my own damn cigarettes because I'm not a rich man. i got to cut corners like everybody else, just like everybody else out there. You know, we're looking for the deal because... Unfortunately, the federal government's taken a lot of our own money away, and it's got to stop. And it's only going to stop by your involvement. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to take too much of your all time. I just really appreciate you coming out. Um, please get behind Lori Klein, help her out, and then thank you very much for showing up today. I really appreciate it. <laughs>